Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's game features two quarterbacks who both played their college and high school ball in the state of California. One a veteran, one a young pup. It's Carson Palmer going up against Jared Goff. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you very much, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL, the National Football League is here and on the air. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Arizona Cardinals. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person. Big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. Greg Zerline, the Rams kicker, approaches, kicks it off. And here we go from Los Angeles. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carson Palmer brings Arizona onto the field, and it was a tough offensive performance for this unit against Philadelphia last week. Palmer just under 300 yards and a touchdown, but this offense only mustered seven points. They've got plenty of playmakers at the wide receiver position. That's not the issue. We know they're led by Larry Fitzgerald, but J. Ron Brown and then uh, John Brown. I mean, they've got guys who can make plays downfield. But the loss of David Johnson at running back, his ability to run the football, his ability to catch it, that's hurt that team maybe even more than we could have ever anticipated. First carry for Adrian Peterson. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's a starting lineup on offense for the Cardinals. And the big news on Tuesday, they traded for Adrian Peterson with David Johnson being out. I think that's a big-time trade for Arizona, who is desperate to get their running game going. Chris Johnson had been their leading ball carrier, averaging less than 30 yards per game. That's not going to cut it in a Bruce Arians offense. They need a ball carrier who can open up passing lanes by drawing some attention away from them. And guess what? Adrian Peterson wasn't going to get those kind of carries in New Orleans. You know he's eager to get to a foot. Looking for Fitzgerald, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 30, and he will bring it back. It's an interception return for a Rams touchdown. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive, pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game, getting the ball, 0-0 zero, zero is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line.
The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. to the air. Palmer after the pick six. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Robert Quinn able to use that strength and get him for a loss of two. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So the D gets the sack on first, and now it brings up second down. Throwing his Palmer over the middle, and it's incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown, and it'll bring up third down. The defense here for the Rams. Robert Quinn's long, angular frame suggests a sprinter coming out of the blocks. I had to ask him, I said, how are you able to gain leverage when rushing the passer? He says, because of high school wrestling. You have to be able to drop your center of gravity and be able to get underneath guys in order to get pins. And he said, I did that pretty darn well in high school, and it's carried over to my play in the NFL. And defensively, a dime look here. Six DBs on third and 12. No surprise at all. Out of the gun, Palmer. And he's got Gresham. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. Strength throwing the football downfield has never been an issue for this big guy. I still remember the first time I met him. He was playing for USC, and when I got introduced to him, I thought I was meeting their starting tight end, not their starting quarterback. Such a presence, Carson Palmer. Very much so. Has had it ever since he entered campus there and still has it today. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. First down, here's the run with Peterson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down, Palmer. Here's a screen to Powell. <laughs> and he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid gain. there it's incomplete it's a tried and true formula and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football if someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough that's only going to help your defense yeah he's since being hurried he got rid of it before taking the hit but incomplete second and ten now it's Palmer and his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph, 
too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. To throw again, it's Palmer. It's hauled in by Ellington. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. From the red zone now, here's Palmer on first down. And Fitzgerald has got it. Touchdown, Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald from 13 yards out. And the Cardinals are just an extra point away from tying this game. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Here's Phil Dawson now for the point after. And oh, it's blocked. This is going the other way. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. But there's a blocked extra point. I remember playing and we had one of those go against us. I remember our kicker and our holder told the head coach, just relax, coach. Why are you yelling? Don't worry, it's just one point. Oh, my. Those coaches see a point is gold to them because you never know how it's going to turn out later. Exactly. That's why I was just going to say first quarter. We'll see if this has any implications as the game goes on. I still can't believe they told the head coach to relax. <laughs> Whoa. Bad move. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. Didn't play in a traditional pro-style offense in college. In fact, at Cal, he played in what they call the Bear Raid. Threw it around a whole bunch. 96 touchdown passes in three seasons. This guy took the ball from game one as a true freshman and never missed a start. So he has a great amount of toughness as well as the ability to throw the big-time ball downfield. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Speaking of Todd Gurley, not his best week last week. He had that streak of 100-yard games going, but I think he, what, 14 carries, 43 yards is what I have down for him. Almost scored a touchdown, though. Reaching for the ball at the pylon. It was ruled a fumble trying to get into the end zone, showing that effort, but he definitely looks like the Todd Gurley we saw as a rookie in 2015. He is a force to be reckoned with because he's not just running it. He catches it in the open field, makes people miss, and of course, will run over a few people along the way as well. Gurley again here on first down, and he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. 
It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. Sometimes just a simple change in scenery, and I think Robert Woods is counting on that, coming back from Buffalo. Now he's back in Los Angeles where he played at USC and had an All-American season there at wide receiver. He expects to be one of the main targets for Jared Goff going forward. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. Like if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. yardage on the play back at the 45 yard line and a look now at Goff as he remains down and shaken up apparently while the trainers take a look we'll step aside So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. So a big development here. Goff is out. And they'll hand it over to the Oregon State product. It's Sean Mannion. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage. But now they're looking at third and ten. And the 11 defensive starters for Arizona. With the Cardinals, you get a package of pressure, and that's on any down, any distance. They always want more people near the line of scrimmage, more people attacking the quarterback. And then back behind that, they have a lot of different looks in their secondary, and they can't wait to get Tyron Matthew back on the field full-time. He's their wild card because they can play him at safety or at corner. So a third and 10, and defensively, a dime look, six DBs. Throwing is Mannion. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. It's Johnny Hecker now, an all-pro three of the last four years on to punt. The pro bowler Patrick Peterson back deep for Arizona. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. 
But a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Here's Palmer. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. They go play action with Palmer. And able to find John Brown. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So the offense has it first and 10. They run the counter now. It's Peterson. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They run again with Peterson. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down, Palmer. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Connor Barwin with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you get a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's got to happen right now. Or very lights quickly, out. <laughs> or exactly right. Turn them out. That play's over. And now a man who made his NFL debut late last year, Matt Wilde, to punt it away. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. getting set to go now. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. one of his advantages of a passer is it not with his height setting back there in the pocket firing it over the middle he can really see everything clearly it is and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways all right you don't have to be his height to make a great play but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket 
to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. On first down, it's Gurley. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they run with Gurley. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll look to throw. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play call sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. He'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Let's go! Blue now it's Brown. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. It's the Rams out to the early lead. We're back to Southern California right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They've got it third and ten here to start things out. top over the middle it's caught inside the 25 and he takes it down deep into Arizona territory and that one results in 35 yards great patience in the pocket of course it's easy to be patient when the protection's good and it was yeah you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. Green, 39. Green. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it's caught at the seven-yard line. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 
Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually up to about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Todd Gurley taking it in from a yard out. And the Rams add on to their lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. A look at Carson Palmer now as we focus in on our player spotlight. And I don't know what more they need to see of him than what we're going to see in this player montage. He's been great. Why aren't they winning this game, I guess, is the question. It is a good question, isn't it? Remember the time we spent with them in practice beforehand and had that little twinkle in his eye where he thought, hey, we can, we can get some bombs in this game. We can get deep, and that's exactly what's going on. But I don't think he thought if they could do that, that they'd be on the losing end. They might need more of this air raid attack. They start the drive with Peterson. Evades the tackler and now some space. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. That run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. They run again on first down, Peterson. And now running right through it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? taken down but not before getting this inside the 30 and a nice gain of 21 yards well coaches always talk about finding balance on offense i don't think you can get much more balance than this big time run big time pass a one two combination look pretty good how about that they, let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though
They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. They run it again with Williams. Down to the 25. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. The Cardinals on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Palmer. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Well, third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but it was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, I say this with a big smile on my face since I'm a little bit on the veteran side. The second oldest kicker in the NFL. He just moved from San Francisco to Arizona and still knocking him through the post. Yeah, Phil Dawson, 42, behind Adam Vinatieri, still kicking at age 44. Now after the main field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. This will be taken in at the one. Gets around him. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll get this up to about the 40. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Another carry now for Gurley. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. I thought it was a big deal when Arizona acquired Chandler Jones before the 2016 season. Some people called it a boom or bust trade. Which Chandler Jones would you get? I think the Cardinals like what they saw in 2016. After four years with New England, really settling in as a Cardinal. gun now on third down. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. This Cardinals pass rush in 2016 got home 48 times. That's a pretty good number. A very good number. Led the league. Is it just because the dudes that they had or the scheme or both or what? It's always the dudes first, but their scheme, attacking, pressure, they'll continue to pile up the sacks. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And 
And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? And tough starting field position here. A toss play. This is Peterson. And he will lose yardage here back to his own six. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Second down, here's Palmer. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back at the 13-yard line. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Palmer. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Matt Weil now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Skirts by him at the 35. Well, that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Last year, Gurley, 74% of L.A.'s carries. That's the highest percentage in the league. But no real payoff because they finished 31st in the league in rushing. I think as a team, they ran for 78 yards per game. They had a 1,000-yard receiver and Kenny Britt out wide, but they really didn't scare people downfield. And because of that, they stacked the line of scrimmage and stuffed the run game. Looking to throw. Pressure comes and the Cardinals bring him down. Chandler Jones from his outside linebacker spot. Forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man. And each man did his job. And that looked like vintage old school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Oh. 
The Rams on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Here we go now. Three, 19. Back to throw here. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. snap as they'll look to throw and he is out of bounds inside the 30 18 yards the game for number 18 in recent years the slot receivers really gained stature in the nfl because they could do so many things yes they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks those guys are worth their weight in gold fake here on first down gonna throw deep for the end zone and nearly picked it off he had a chance to come down with that in the end zone but it'll wind up just being incomplete a missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off the drive they had a chance there to finish things off didn't get it done I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense And here comes play number six on this drive. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. The Rams on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. They'll stick to the ground game with Gerland. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now here's a timeout defensively coming from the Cardinals. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. 
And Zerline's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to eight. So a little fortunate there because that one was definitely leaking right. Without a doubt. Maybe about the width of a football or so inside that right upright. But he got it to go. the made field goal Zerline back out there now to send this one away this is taken about seven yards deep and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25 and our focus now moves to Adrian Peterson he's been good they've utilized him well but they're losing here in the second quarter what might they change offensively I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Jaron Brown, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Charles, looking back to last week, the injury bug really bit some teams. Heck, Houston's defense lost J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless about 10 minutes apart. Has not been a good last two weeks in terms of injuries to key players players in the NFL. Dalvin Cook, the rookie runner in Minnesota, who's playing so well, he got hurt the previous week. And as you noted, this week for Houston, Merciless goes down, torn peck, he's out for the season. J.J. Watt fracturing his leg, gone for the season. And how about in New York? Odell Beckham Jr., fractured ankle, gonna get a second opinion, likely gone for the season. They'll throw on first down here with Palmer. And Gresham has it, left side. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's another 10 yards on that one, and another first down. Palmer to throw again. And this is caught on the left side, Jerron Brown. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. They go play action here on first down. Keeps himself, and no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Second down. Going up top. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. J.J. Nelson, 54 yards. And now the Cardinals are within a two-point conversion of tying up this game. Yeah, touchdown. I love it. Now it's only a two-point game. I know it's the first half, but you've got to think. Go for two. Tie it up. Go into the locker room. What are you doing? Come on. You're bold. You're bold. It's real easy to be bold sitting up here yeah, rather is, than right? down we, there and making that decision. We don't have to make those decisions. Either way, a little time left on the clock here in the second quarter. We'll see how this all plays out. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown.
Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And there is a flag as he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. But who's this going to be against? Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. down and his first throw since coming in is incomplete Cooper Cup was his intended target and now it's second down well that gives us a second here to talk about the Chiefs 5 and 0 oh. not only that but nobody else in the AFC is 4 and 1 best record behind them 3 and 2 obviously they're talented they've had a good record going for the last few seasons under head coach Andy Reid but it's funny one of our colleagues Ryan he had talked about watching Kansas City he says they just look like they're having fun out there. They have more fun than anyone else. The way they run offense with the exotic sets of plays that Andy Reid's calling, Travis Kelsey catching those shovel passes, they're doing option stuff with Alex Smith, and then the defense, they're just having a ball chasing it. I like it. Hunt, Hill, and Kelsey, those just seem like guys you want to hang out with. They, they are having fun. They certainly do, yes, and they are undefeated. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. strike they'll look to throw and this one hauled in by Tavon Austin and now a fumble the ball's out and the Cardinals have got it going the other way and they have possession and they have it at the 38 yard line we have seen this before and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time catch the ball you know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. So out now come the Cardinals. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Following the fumble recovery, it's Palmer. He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Off the play fake. Here's Palmer. Bearing this one out for Fitzgerald. No, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier, trying to keep him in the rhythm. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Out of the gun, Palmer. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. And they're going to 
take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say, we'll see what happens. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Matt Weil now as he's on to punt for Arizona. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's Austin. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top as we will send you eastward to Orlando and Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Rams are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Cardinals won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Cardinals opening drive. Palmer is under pressure and throws the pick. Rams will end up returning it for a touchdown as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Now first and 10. Carson Palmer on the money to the old reliable Larry Fitzgerald. And this play will go for six. Rams with the ball early in the second. Cardinals trail now by one. Rams now later on the drive. Gurley's going to take off here. And he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Late in the second. Rams go up by eight. Here he throws deep down the field. It's caught. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had an ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. There's gone. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. one to Gurley and hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42 call it a gain of four on first and that'll make it second down when you find that kind of yardage you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier and guess what you're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator I'd like to keep carrying it thank you Play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And the open 
receiver. It's Robert Woods. A very solid gain of 27. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. Man, probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining him on this stage. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Robert Kimdichi in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. And the best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, the defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. Second down, here's Goff. They got a man over the middle, it's Woods. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Rams on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And Zerline's kick is good. And they add on and get a little bit of a cushion. It's 20 to 16 now. So it's a seven play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffened toward the end. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. 
other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Yeah, shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They try to fire up the run game with Adrian Peterson. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll bring up a second and 14. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, Palmer. And he can't get away from the pressure. Palmer sacked. Alec Ogletree in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Palmer gets him set. Third and long for the Cardinals after the sack. From the gun, Palmer. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Matt Weil now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll be taken just outside the 40. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Left, left. 
This is Brown on the carry. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. A great play there. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Rams add on to their lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Zerline line now for the PAT. Pushes the lead up to 11. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was finished off with a 10-yard touchdown scamper. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The putter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. On first and ten, it's Palmer toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, let's take a quick pan across the league and talk about we've got three 0-5 teams still in the NFL. Two that you might expect, Browns and 49ers, but the Giants sitting at 0-5. Yeah, I don't know how many people would have had that in the preseason. If so, we need to hang out with them because they know what they're doing, right? But here's the thing. San Francisco this week, I believe, goes to Washington. Yeah. All right, Cleveland, who do they take on this week? They take on the Texans in Houston. In Houston. And the Giants, do they go on the road to Denver? Yes. So all three on paper are going to get to 0-6. I'm going to make a prediction. One of those three is going to end their skid. And I'm going to tell you who it is. Who? Cleveland is going to get it done. Hot take central. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and seven. And we've got movement by one of the big boys up front for Arizona. Flag comes in. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third down and 12. Operating from the gun, Palmer. And he's got Fitzgerald. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 
A really good pickup of 28 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. A tenth carry now for Peterson. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. To throw on second down. Palmer incomplete. He was trying to get it to AP out of the backfield. And it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. the gun. Palmer. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They'll try and throw for it with Palmer. And that is going to be incomplete. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. Well, partner, one story that certainly caught NFL attention from this last week, Peyton Manning having the statue unveiled in Indianapolis for the years he spent there from 98 to 2011. How about those years? When you talk about glory years, they, that's exactly what they were in Indianapolis with Peyton Manning as their starting quarterback. A couple of Super Bowl appearances, one victory, but so many records, so many MVPs, so many great memories there. It's right that they retired his jersey and commemorated him with a statue. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Fake the give. Now Goff. Austin's got it left side. And he's brought down. Goff to Austin that time for an L.A. first down. set of downs here and on the outside they're playing press coverage on first down gone and that'll be incomplete we do have a penalty flag down however let's see what that's about offense 
So they say no to the penalty. The incompletion stands. It'll be second and 10. And what they want to do is go ahead and take those downs away from them. You never want to give extra snaps to any offense. That's how you get hurt. It brings up a third and ten. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. The Rams on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. Goff now looking to throw. They'll set up the screen with Davis. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard, and it's fourth. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. On second down, here's Palmer. His throw incomplete. on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. Now Palmer. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports back now in los angeles it's cardinal football but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Throwing now, Palmer on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. To throw again, it's Palmer. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. throw on third down. Here's a screen to Powell. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That'll go as a loss of five. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They're able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they can get a first down. Here's Matt Wild now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. to the line of scrimmage and no more call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for them they've got the advantage so I'm gonna put musical terms for you you don't want to go prestissimo that's too quick too lively right but you also don't want to slow it down too much you don't want to go lento what you really want to be is moderato uh, nice and even uh, nice and steady get those gains and close out the game i think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head <laughs> here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Throwing on third. Golf. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. <laughs> A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. The Rams dead last in the NFL last year on third down conversions, just 32%, but they come through there. They've got a much better chance of that number rising this year for a variety of factors. Of course, they're going to get their quarterback, Jared Goff, going. But the big part is, last season, they were really a one-trick pony on offense. Now they'll be much more varied under new head coach, Sean McVay. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run. 
Braun. This is Brown. And he'll get this up to about the 40. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all on your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Second down following the run. Now gone. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? The Rams on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. Here it's third and three. A shotgun snap for gone. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Now Palmer on first down. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. down it's Palmer finding a safety valve here that's complete and he showed off the athletic juke good little gain there not a whole lot of real estate but a nice carry this possession means so much for them they've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game yes. gotta get a score yeah so good with a field goal don't necessarily need a touchdown and on the outside they're playing press coverage Now Palmer to throw on second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Again, it's Palmer. And this is going to be incomplete. I have to say, that was a surprise call on third and inches. I thought they'd try and run the football there, but you got to believe they thought they'd surprise the defense and pick up something downfield. But that one goes incomplete. Here's Matt Wild now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. 
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. on the play back at his own 19 yard line that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down well you had to punt on your first drive and on the first play of the second drive you end up going backwards i would dare say they need something good to happen right here right now looks like the defense in press coverage here the draw. Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Wide open receiver complete. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Goff fighting fellow second-year man Higby for a Rams first down. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. They go play action here on first down. Airing it out deep for Woods. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Not only did they drop, but look like an interception in the end zone. They blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. The Rams on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and seven. Out of the gun. Gone. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. From the 50, it's gone. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup, And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second down now after the pass completion. Now it's Gurley, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. So offensively on this drive, two of two on third downs, and now they face a third of inches. They'll run it here with Brown. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Now it's Brown. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got, to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And a short gain down to about the 33. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. From the gun, here's Goff. And that is incomplete. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked. He's got daylight. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown.
All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. They'll look to throw. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets them back within a field goal. So the deficit now three after the huge conversion, but they need to get the football back. So this is where special teams really comes into play because getting the ball back, it starts with this next kickoff. How do they get downfield? Either jar it loose or get the ball back themselves. That's going to be key for them. So they got their touchdown, now down a field goal. Here comes the onside kick. And the hands team for the Rams able to secure the football. And now looking at the clock here, they do have two timeouts, but even if they force a three and out, they're gonna have very little time remaining. So that means they've got to be aggressive and find a way to knock the ball free. They've got to come up with it because they can't just rely, as you noted, on using their timeouts and getting the ball back. They might not have any time to mount an attack, even if they do play it that way. Get the football. That's their mantra. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. First down, it's Gurley. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. And now the Cardinals are going to use another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Throwing now. Golf. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding of where they are in the field? And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Gurley. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they run with Gurley. He will push his way down to about the 14. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football, and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. 
And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. It's a gain of eight there, and that should be enough to seal the victory. And this defense, they needed that one more stop to have any chance, but that completion, that's likely going to seal their fate. And you could hear it in your voice, that one more stop. Feel their pain. Oh, it was so important. They just didn't get it done. Wow, what a way to finish this one off. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park in L.A.